Hi, I'm Steven. This is the Vundacast uh, Wrestling Panel. Um, we're a podcast. Um, I started it in 2013 um, with my wife and my friend Vera, and it's expanded over the last five years to be like a nice place for anything and everything nerdy. And anytime I come across someone who has passion or see someone who really is like just hyper nerdy and doesn't have any place to to put it, I like to uh, invite them onto my blog and interview them on my podcast and really pick their brain and uh, and promote them as much as I can. Uh, my name is Steven. This is Mr. J. Hey. This is Blockbuster Guy Frank. He has a YouTube channel called yeah. Always Blockbuster Guy. <laughs> and I'm going to play our theme song, and then we're going to do an episode of the Blindacast for you live and in the flesh. Wrestling. Whoa. We have a bunch of panels. We have six more panels um, after this one. And actually, no, we have five more panels after this one till the end of the con. In the year 1997, the future is in chaos and turmoil. Mankind is on the brink of extinction. Brave survivors band together and build a time displacement apparatus to receive a signal from a parallel future. This transmission is the Bundekast. That's our theme song written by Jay Sarge, who also did the theme song for the uh, Tell Him Steve Dave podcast, and he's uh, an extremely talented composer and musician um, who's a part of uh, the Tell Him Steve Dave uh, podcast family. So he did our theme song back in back in episode 57 of our podcast where we interviewed him. And uh, basically, we are on floor super fun. If I don't have that in all of my videos, anything no, goes. I'm in trouble. That was not supposed to be there. Anything does go in here. <laughs> so if you guys want to chime in, I have uh, this podcast microphone here. It's omnidirectional, so it should pick up everyone's chatter in the room. Eventually, this will all be um, a podcast um, that's going to be on our RSS feed um, on iTunes and Stitcher and Google Play. Um, I started talking about wrestling on the podcast early on, I think before episode 9 or 10. I started doing a bunch of podcasts uh, with my friend D-Rock, who got me back into wrestling since, uh, since high school, when I started taking a break and stuff. And we originally called our podcast Fake Fighting Frenzy, because we always called it Fake Fighting, because for us that was like the cute way of, of saying, but over time we realized that it's kind of like insensitive to, uh, for wrestlers, if you ever want to talk to a wrestler, to call it Fake Fighting, is they'll just like, you immediately, they'll just disconnect from you, because they want... You know, they want respect for their art and for their profession. Right. No uh, so we have since, like, adjusted. Actually, when we first uh, started recording, we had, like, a whole... We had, like, five episodes of a podcast we never aired that was called uh, The Spanish Announce Table, where me and Mr. J and D-Rock would basically, like, we'd try... D D Re Derek would try to talk wrestling with us, and then Mr. J would start talking about, like cinnamon buns and like he just <laughs> constantly derail us so those podcasts never saw the light of day because they just like were, I didn't think anyone would ever want to hear them but us because they were just garbage <laughs> like it's really just like one person really trying to wrestling podcast and the other two people just like making fun of him but eventually great things happened in wrestling that pulled me in like the shield that was like the big faction that got me back into wrestling um, I really like was into uh, like Rollins and Ambrose, and I was into the idea that I loved Roman Reigns at the time in 2013. And there was like the speculation of is Roman Reigns gonna get to be the next guy? Uh, but uh, so so seeing that all play out, and then seeing Seth Rollins 
betray the shield on Monday Night Raw and turn his back on uh, his shield brethren. Like, as soon as that moment happened and the way it played out with, like, you know, Triple H bringing him into the authority and everything, like, I was re-hooked on wrestling, like, really hard after that. I've had the WWE Network uh, since then and have had a great time just going back and, like, seeing all the little dumb stuff that has happened in wrestling. And that's really, I think, the magic of wrestling is that there's that breath of, like, you know, almost 100 years of wrestling history and just the kind of the attitude of wrestling where if it sells, if it's if it'll make money, let's try it. Let's see what happens. And if it sells, it'll make money. Let's see what happens. So let's try it. Here we have The Rock in his uh, first big, uh, big, a big performance for The Mummy Returns, the intro. Here he is before he became full CGI. This is the <laughs> performance thinking, right? that started yeah. the movie career of the biggest action star of the 20... 20- First century. 2010s, 20 aughts, 20, 21st century. There you go. You might say that. He might be the Charlie Chaplin. I agree, Rock. So that is kind of what this panel is going to be. It's going to be an oasis of wrestling for you. Whoa! Check it out. It's Daniel Bryan Carlos. <laughs> What's your name, my friend? Mario. Mario. Daniel Bryan. Right Daniel Mario in the house. The dragon so son himself. Bryan. Watch out. Awesome. Please have a seat. Welcome. We're here, Florida Supercon 2018. Anubis says, sit down. He's pointing at you. See? Do it. <laughs> um, so I was just kind of talking about our wrestling history. So what about you, Mr. J? When did you first uh, find the squared circle in your in your young life? Well, I was going to I was gonna say, like, what you were saying, how you read found wrestling. Mm-hmm. I think it was around the time of Daniel Bryan. And, like, when he first um, started the Yes Movement and, like, nobody cared about him and he was just... Like, he, I think he, he fought, like, the big show. Yeah. And he won the title, and everybody thought it was, like, a fluke, and he'll never, like, you know, it was supposed to be funny, you know? Like, right. he'll never, like, actually be a well, real I, I remember you the day, the day you came back from Hot Topic, and you're like, oh, my God, I got Hell No shirts. This is awesome. <laughs> they sell Team Hell No shirts at Hot Topic. This is the best. I yeah. got to go to a show. Oh, my God. I got the shirt that says, I'm a tag team champion. But what Whoa. about the greater thing where I am the tag team champions? Oh, no, I'm yeah. the tag team champions. I'm the tag yeah. team champions. It's randomly just shouting no, it about. No, no, so I think that was like what brought me back into, into like wrestling into the fold. and CM Punk and. Oh, it's Blockbuster guy Frank. What? What for you? You're gonna be surprised. How kindled I got the that. fires of wrestling. You had the Shield. You had the Yes Movement. I had. The Long Island IC get me back into wrestling. Which Whoa. <laughs> around 2009, the Broski himself, just... Zack Ryder, he was exactly. the one. Oh because my God. at the time, oh, things were just going a little. What do you see? Yeah. But when I went to 2011, found that Long Island IC, just seeing the pure humor he had brought to the table and also making Man, Dolph Ziggler and John I, Morrison I seem more incredible than Mike Wise was something that really got me interested in all three of them. Because, you know, like, prior to that, a lot of people were leaving, like, Kurt Angle, going to TNA, W at the time was kind of here and there with the exception of the occasional pay-per-views and WrestleMania, hey, but, like, the younger talent that wasn't seeing it. And then when I found Zach randomly, <laughs> was searching up Fist and Lower Star, somehow I found Zack Ryder, and I'm like, what the flip? It's amazing, because if there's any wrestler that's as much like blockbuster guy Frank as possible, exactly. it probably would be Zack Ryder. Right? Exactly. Can you think of any wrestler that would be more block? Maybe there's one wrestler that could be more than Blockbuster Guy Frank. Ooh. I think you'd be the Undertaker because he does not die. Mm-hmm. Blockbuster has closed down for four That's years, cool. and he's still wearing, wearing his suit. He's still right. promoting Blockbuster. Oh. oh my God! Do not destroy our panel wall right now. <laughs> Don't break okay? the boundaries. I'll consider it. This is not an episode of The Incredible Hulk starring Lou Ferrigno fighting Lou Ferrigno. Oh, this uh, is an episode of JoJo's Bizarre no. Adventure. <laughs> and it's getting bizarre. He, <laughs> this is like part four. He could be Chris Jericho breaking the walls down. The walls of Jericho are <laughs> never going to be broken. He, he better... Uh, I, I just have a lion heart, okay? I'm just trying to get to his podcast. I understand why it's so hard. Okay? Um, so, yeah. So, we're big wrestling fans. Um, I actually, back in uh, 2013 at Florida Supercon... Um, I met uh, Michael Kingston from uh, the Headlock comic, who's downstairs, who uh, does a comic with Jerry the King Lawler, and he does a comic uh, with uh, Michelle uh, Molipola, is the name of his artist, out of uh, Auckland, New Zealand. Uh, they 
Michael Kingston and Michelle Malipola have been uh, on our podcast to talk about Headlocked and promote Headlocked. And I was actually drawn into the second volume of Headlocked, uh, the, called The Last Territory. And uh, in that volume of Headlocked, The Last Territory, I... Uh, I, uh, I play a cameraman, and just like in comics where everyone's proportions are really good and you look really great all the time, I am lean and mean and spelt and spin. It's like the most amazing thing in the world. Even asking one, asking someone to draw you, you know, accurately, they still, you know, they still want to make you look super. make you look good. So I have here um, a special prize for you guys um, for showing up to the panel. I'm going to give you guys the latest copy of Headlock, the trade paperback. One of you is going to walk away with it once we get into the trivia Resolution. section of the podcast. For your pleasure, you're going to get, you could walk away here with a graphic novel. It looks like it's already signed by Jerry Lawler. You guys can get it signed by uh, the writer, Michael Kingston, if you want, downstairs. Um, but that's a that's that's game for you guys. The creator, if you're interested. You guys hang out for the rest of uh, the panel. So now let's look at some funny moments, some classic things, the things, the most important things in all of wrestling things, right? So let's jump the gun. Let's go through some moments. Jump through the ladder, man. Let's go some moments. Okay, yeah. If you're just talking about Jerry the King Lawler, Jerry the King Lawler is hands down the, in my opinion, the greatest heel in all of wrestling. Nobody is as creative on promos and has done more for as many wrestlers as Jerry the King Lawler. Out of Memphis, We're he promotions. created so many gimmicks. Who? And promotions. And promotions, yeah. yeah. Over, like, and he has world titles, doesn't he? Yeah, technically he, he has, has the most title belts. Right? Yeah. He has more title wins than any wrestler ever because he will go to any indie show <laughs> and he will beat your champion and lose it to him in the same night. He doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, not just that, the same night he might even go to you know, go to Raw and commentate literally right after a match. I'm not joking. He's done that before. He loves it. He was uh, last year. It's the thrill he, he wrestled at WrestleCon there. with uh, what's this called? The the Dick Wrestler guy. I can't remember his name. Jerry Ryan. Jerry Ryan. There Dick we go. Johnson, he had a guy? big big match with him at WrestleCon last year, and then the next night, That's boom, so he's in uh, WrestleMania, calling matches, calling the the Andre the Giant Battle Royale and all that good stuff. Here we have RoboCop and Sting. Classic WCW oh, promo, so the tag team of the century. I think Robocop's a horrible tag team partner, frankly, because if he can't even get in and out of his <laughs> own car, how is he supposed to get in and out of his ring? I do not understand. Who would you would your? Technically cheating? Do you have any '80s body. action hero that you wish was your wrestling partner, Mr. J? Mm-hmm. I would want the Terminator if we're keeping it cyborg based. Because he can cut a mean promo. He's already got some hot catchphrases. Hasta la vista, baby. You know? You know who would be You got a cool promo shot where he's got his thumb and he's like descending into molten lava. I'm a cheese. He smiles. He's got the baby face smile. We've seen it in T2. I'm going to skip him. But I'm going to tell you, instead of having just one partner, I'm going to have a tag team stable. Get Rambo, Special Stallone, and get John claude Van Damme. Sylvester Stallone as Rambo. No, no, it's Sylvester Stallone and Rambo and me as a team. A faction, a stable. Forget just a regular partner. <laughs> so Rambo and John Van Damme and you yes. are the new, new, new day. Yes. <laughs> or the old day and one millennial, <laughs> if you want. See, I the think he just stole Stallone, who's probably your half, number one pick. Wait, no, yeah, see, oh, half, God. Oh. This is going to be a fight. Stallone, this might be a fight. Only, like, he got the wrong Stallone, though. You gotta get Rocky because he he can fight oh. you in the street. Forget he was Rocky. Top yeah, Funk. but he yep. always loses the first the first the first, the first round. <laughs> the first round. The first round. The first but match. He'll come back. There's, there's more than fifteen. There's there's not fifteen rounds of wrestling. <laughs> yeah, but he'll come back. <laughs> he, and he'll, he'll be done. Twelve rounds of wrestling. All I'm saying is Rambo has disappeared. Thunderlips. Thunderlips. What what is it? He's the 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 ultimate male. Yeah. The Versus ultimate the, love machine. The ultimate love. Yeah. Yeah. These the ultimate meatball. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, and we have uh, Chris Turner, the director and creator. Producer. And producer, whoa, of Cosplay and Me. He's got a showing tomorrow uh, in room 301 at 1230 of his documentary, Cosplay and Me. Fun fact, uh, fun fact, Steven is one of the producers of the movie. 
Yep. And, and Frank is right here is one of the stars. I got a little cameo. Frank looks like a beautiful baby face. He looks like a white days. meat baby face. I was yeah. like the say your prayers type of guy, always taking my vitamins. Say did no you put moisturizer on your face that day? Because it looks like you moisturized. You never know, but you gotta it see the like video to find out. See it tomorrow. I'm really hard at it. Yeah, you're gonna want to see this because he looks very pretty in this. Like well, I'm not his even longer hair. Like the only thing he's missing color. is like an After Effects like shimmer over his smile that goes like pink and stuff. All right, Mr. J, your tech department. You can get to it. I'm sorry. I'm gotta get to your tech department. I said Rocky because Rocky? he can wrestle. That's Rocky Fine, he'll street fight you. So well, I got Rocky. So I picked Schwarzenegger, you picked Stallone. You picked Stallone and John Van Damme? So you're saying, wait, wait, you're saying Stallone has a mankind effect where it's like he could be Rocky and He's got multiple gimmicks. <laughs> yeah. Hey, he's he's one of the few guys who has actually like Been in stable multiple franchises. Do like ter like Arnold's multiple franchises are not That's true. Terminator franchise is not a stable <laughs> Do you guys remember that no. one Royal Rumble where Mick Foley went through all of his different identities? Yeah, yeah I watched one that. Hour. Yeah, that's that's, that was awesome. That was so insane. He that's, had a run. I think that's like 2002, 2003. Put it on. No, that was like 2000. And feel fresh. Oh, no, like, no, I think it was 2001. One of the best rumbles I've ever seen in my life. Oh, yeah, that was a good rumble. rumble. That I, they, they, it's weird, too, because I feel like at that point in the rumble, they had just like kind of started like... Playing with like the Royal Rumble rules a little bit, Dude, they, uh, around they the early two thousand. The window that was because perfect. because the first like fifteen years of Royal Rumbles, hmm. things are kind of straightforward. You know what I mean? Like they're not really like doing any dumb Royal Rumbley gimmicks that they're like so so used to now. Which when I say dumb, I mean with the absolute love. I'm the dumbest person probably in this room. <laughs> I mean, the best. Thing. Well, let's show the tape. Watch this. Curtis Axel is still in his Royal. Rumble. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> Curtis Axel is like the, he's like the gum on the bottom of the WWE that they, like just always is stuck there. Supposedly, the what I heard was that Curtis Axel, uh, oh, okay. he was The Rock's uh, training partner really? to get this The old, Rock ready. Is the, huh? No, this is wrestling. Uh, Vundacast Wrestling, Go Go Super Spectacular Wrestling Panel, something like that. Three Seventeen. Yes. This is Three Seventeen. Vundacast Wrestling Spectacular. Terry McGinnis. We got this room till 6.15. So, like I was saying, um, I like wrestling very much. It's good. This is a clip of uh, Jerry the King Lawler making fun of people and showing what an amazing heel, heel he is. <laughs> Supposed to be here Saturday and Sunday. Okay. Well, let's show the tape. Watch here. this. Come on. Okay. Okay, I got a couple of real Alabamians right here. And what's your name? James what? D. James Dees. He's an orthodontist dream. And this is James' son, Eugene. How you doing, Eugene? Pretty good. Pretty good, huh? Hey, James, how many cars you got parked in your front yard? Uh, two. Two? And this is your son right here, huh? I got a question for you, James. If you and your wife were to get divorced, would, they, would you still be brother and sister? <laughs> That's a tough one, isn't it? These are real Alabamians. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, huh? They're from Mobile, Alabama. One of the Dinah Screams. You're hideous. See, that's why Jerry the King Lawler is the best. Like, he, he will find, like, one little catchphrase. And on, a, on like a promo, and he'll just start like he'll just replay it. Like Orthodontist Dream, like that is such a great punchline, and he knows it because he's like, no, I'm coming back to broadcast. I'm gonna say it again, Michael Cole. Deal with it. Here we got some top 30 moments according to the WWE, which that happened in Royal Rumbles. For me, the Royal Rumble is my favorite pay per view. Like the the the, 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 the format the that was created by Pat Patterson, the first Intercontinental Champion, cannot Ooh. be beat. Um, like you get all these people coming in, you get like the power of just so many wild, crazy wrestling first moments happening. I think this is top oh, thirty yeah. WrestleMania moments. Looks like, damn it! It's a lot. Oh, oh my god! Oh shit! Oh, yeah, he did. I don't know. He, the thing is, he bought the. I think. Most, I forgot his name again. The guy that's being. Giant Gonzalez. There you go. He messed up his thing. He put too much. I think it was sandbag. You put it. You put it in 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 this in this to show that you know wrestling is real, even though it's. The thing is, like, it, to look like they that. put their bodies on the line for entertainment to be called fake when they. It's like it's like theater. They don't get hurt. But sometimes, like, and that's based on the performance performance-wise. And that's really why I like headlock. Maybe that's what they want you to think, though. 
you're exactly right. It is like theater, and that's why I liked Headlocked as a comic because the the very concept of Headlocked is that there's one kid who has a dream, who used to be a theater student, and he drops out of theater school and decides to become a wrestler, and he's got to pay his dues and wear a mask and get beat up, and you know go through the grind, and there's all these like colorful, fun uh, wrestling characters. Um, in it that are made up and they're kind of like amalgams of other wrestlers that you've heard about but kind of like mixed together and morphed and stuff like that. Oh my god. The ladder match of all time. Shawn oh, Michaels. Razor, razor Ramon. Oh. The ladder, Once the ladder in a match. lifetime battle that lasted like Once what? Once in a lifetime. Yeah. Three so times? Curtis Axel helped The Rock because he hadn't wrestled in years before this match train and he was basically doing all of John Cena's moves to the rock so you're saying <laughs> four he... months before that Wrestlemania in Orlando so that... are you saying he you did it Miami. for the rock in Miami yeah sorry uh, get it he did it for the rock the Rikishi no I don't get it well, no. Rikishi hit no him. no I don't no 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 yes yes oh, yes, yes I did yes. it for Dude, the rock come on you can't do that I did it for the people so you guys decided to see Rey Mysterio here rock. this weekend He's still That's what I'm psyched about. Rey Dude. Mysterio. I want to see Lawler. I want to see Shawn Michaels. Gangrel like fans. Gangrel's like here? Of course, of course. Of course. Yeah. Gangrel has one of has like, the craziest entrances. That's the best it's gimmick. So cool. Like in the age of when like Interview with the Vampire was the hottest movie in the world. Blade. Blade. And Blade. What is? So you gotta go for the Brood. The beginning of Edge and Christian. The, yeah, the formation of Edge and Christian. I, I wish. That, that Christian would have showed up because you'd have had a cool you would have had a cool moment with Gangrel and Christian coming back together. I, I don't know. I don't know. Did any uh, has, has anyone seen anyone in like a, a fluffy sh- a roughly shirt uh, cosplay? Because Gangrel's Gangrel's got to be the easiest cosplay in the world, right? Yeah. Yellow wig, vampire fangs, fluffy shirt. Exactly. You gotta get like, a cup of blood. Yeah. yeah he's like, got he's got the best gimmick like vampire gimmick. Has there been a rest like a werewolf gimmick? They tried I, many I know they've had a couple Frankenstein they tried a gimmicks. Guy. Yeah, the Gobbler. The Gobbler was originally called another vampire gimmick. Oh, you're considering Grey Animal Steel, which one? Werewolf? The Gobbler was originally called another gimmick. Hey, I'll take it. George the Animal Steel. Of course, you can't, you can't forget the Yeti. The Yeti? Almost was the Yeti. No, it wasn't the Yeti. He was like a mummy. I know. Yeah, but I think it was I think it was Nash or Kane or something. No, it wasn't It wasn't neither. It was somebody else. I watched a video on it. There's our president oh. shaving <laughs> the president, the, the 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 kind of president of the United States. At least he got a stunner <laughs> in the end. How sad. Yeah, but he beat hey, Vince McMahon. Whoa, that's Yo, what it's all about. Ricky the Dragon yeah. Steamboat. We met Ricky the oh. Dragon Steamboat actually uh, in 2012. I don't know what happened, but for a brief flicker of a moment at uh, the Miami Dade County Youth Fair, we had NXT for one year. So in 2012, they had an NXT show at the Miami-Dade for free, totally for free. Paige was there. I met Baron Corbin. He handed me my program. He hadn't, he wasn't even, like, anything yet. He was just handing out programs and, like, helping people with their seats. Paying the dues. He, like, talked to me for, like, 30 minutes. He's doing nothing. Paige was amazing. She was wrestling the main event. And then I think the main, uh, Jinder Mahal was there. Whoa. And uh, he, he had his, like, promo picture. He had a turban on. So uh, Justin Gabriel, who was freaking also there, he took the autograph picture I had of um, of Jinder Mahal and drew an arrow to his turban and wrote penis head next to it. <laughs> <laughs> like the NXT show at the Dade County Youth Fair was the most amazing thing in the world. And Norman Smiley was there like supervising everything. And then they had Ricky the Dragon Steamboat's son, who was in NXT for a while, was wrestling there that night. So Ricky the Dragon Steamboat was there. And I got to get just like an impromptu photo op with him. And this one like 2012 NXT experience at the Dade County Youth Fair is probably pound for pound the greatest (laughs) Dade County ticket youth fair purchase I've ever made in my entire life. I got in for $10. And I got like four autographs for free and like five pictures, <laughs> and I got like like just FaceTime with you know the the fu- with future future, future WWE ex wrestler Baron Corbin probably. <laughs> oh, um, there's I think he's gonna join the Bullet Club. That's gonna be sick. He does. Uh, whoa! There we have a leg drop miss so that Ultimate Warrior can splash his way into a WrestleMania six victory. 
OMG, whoa. And here the we have. The twice in a lifetime, right? The twice in a lifetime. They See, lied. This is kind I was of. I'm so mad about that. It really was. That's, that's probably one of the things so I'm most. Positive, like the, that one, two, three. Mm-hmm. Like, literally, the whole build up to the, the once in a lifetime was really well done because of yeah, the whole. Yeah, one year to do it. Yeah, that one chance, this one they opportunity. Had a whole year. They were building up so John C. It was looking like he was gonna actually be the yeah, loser. Yeah, just ended it. And yet, the thing is, it, it really reminded me a lot of how the Hulk Hogan and The Rock, one generation to another, ultimate dream match. Yeah. Was like, it WrestleMania 18? Or was it? But you know what I'm trying to tell them. They were trying to emulate that. And it's like I'm seeing what they're doing here. They're gonna finally pass that torch and make John Cena win. But if they're to make him lose, <coughs> maybe go a crazy route with John, and you know. He lost, which like, you know, I mean, it was, it was, it made, like, it made a lot of sense for the Rock to win at twenty eight because mm-hmm. it's in Miami, the Rock's hometown. But at the same time, yeah, it's not, well, you have to be smart. A lot of superstars lose in their hometown. Yeah, You're not supposed time. to win in your hometown. Yes. A re- wrestling logic, that's but the, he's not every superstar. He's, he's the, the, the freaking rock. rock, the people's and champion. He did, you know, like he took that win. So, cause and taking that win was like. Probably contractually obligated. Like next year, we're doing this again. But the thing is, and like, John's going over. I feel like it diminished that entire match, that no. entire feud. What? The fact that once in a lifetime became a twice in a lifetime, and that they wasted the whole storyline because, like Johnson, it was a squash match, like the yeah. second one. It didn't really feel as good as the first match. I felt nothing because, like, literally, they started seeing the losing matches after WrestleMania, which was great. It's like, oh my god. He's going on a lose streak. Maybe he's gonna start losing his hustle. Maybe a little bit of loyalty and respect. <laughs> maybe he's gonna evolve respect. himself. He's all out of respect. And maybe make him obsessed with fighting the rock because at the same time in real life, he's all he out of respect. His wife by the end of the match, high school sweetheart. <laughs> so like it was a really bad year for Cena, but they could have did so much for the uh, What could have well, been the, the other thing the that, that killed that about that time was that right? or what like they should have been. WWE has done this a lot. All the time. Where for WrestleMania, they just replay the same match, like Triple H and Undertaker. Roman Reigns. And all that stuff. Like, if they had put someone like CM Punk or someone who was going to be their next big champion, that match right now would be a lot more valuable to them on the WWE Network than just the second time. Well, the the problem is that the second match... That The Rock and John Cena fun. I can't wait 20 20 years The problem is the second match he got hurt. hurt. So, like, that's why... Okay, so think about really... how much better that match would have worked if you would have had a third guy to play off of and cover up all of, you know, the weaknesses that were going on. That, that was a huge missed opportunity. Every time WWE decides to just redo the exact same thing over at WrestleMania is a wasted opportunity. Especially Triple H. Triple H losing to The Undertaker twice. No, three times. Is maddening. Three, three, three times. Three, three back, total? back when Undertaker oh was God. badass, he basically beat Triple H. And I love Triple then H. Then he beat him when he was uh, like the dead man. And then he beat him one more time in Hell in a Cell. But the last one was actually really, really good. Shawn Michaels is in there. Three times. Three times. But the thing, is, the thing is, yeah, it's you, the thing is, too much. It is. Him the first time he fought him, it was like almost ten years prior. So that made sense. They were younger. Yeah. Feel okay. But now they're older. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me three times? Hey, hey, stop fighting the Undertaker, Triple H. I don't care how many tri- how many H's are in your name. Just fight the Undertaker twice. Triple Give someone else a shot. If you want to beat him, I would never watch him. Yeah, dude. Triple I'm H sorry, might have had to but, but, but wouldn't he have been, like, he's already the biggest, like, corporate asshole heel. What more corporate asshole heel he move could, find the way. could you do than, it's like, the disrespecting the Undertaker? But why are you like, going to build him up higher? I, I don't need because in well, reality Triple H wants to take yeah. over the world. Well, I think he has to move up. I imagine Vince's logic is Undertaker's done. Like you know, Undertaker's at the end of his road. Triple H, he still got what? Maybe um, no, but a lifetime of like of whatever one star matches. Yeah, <laughs> even a bunch of shitty one star matches starring his son in law <laughs> are gonna drop. Look, let me tell you why I have. Triple H, I read this and I was like, okay, I just know, I'm done. Um, there's an edict that in the SmackDown video game series, uh-huh. this is like years ago, okay. you could not have any clip showing Triple H getting beat up, hurt, or anything on the losing side. So every time you saw anything with Triple H in any promotion, of all like the 80 wrestlers they had in that series, if Triple H is there, he's punching, kicking, tri- pedigree. He's not taking even a single punch. That's not a reversal. Not a missed, no, no. 
He has to be dominant. They cannot show him weak. So no, I don't need Triple H to be even more elevated than he is. <laughs> Yo, you need to bow down to the game. Didn't you hear his theme song, man? Come on. Bow down to the game. Bow down. Mike Tyson. That was the other. If they really made Punk, Cena, and Rock, the first time, and then Punk wins, she could have claimed that he won against Cena and Rock, which would have blown both of them out of the water. Then he would have been like Chris Kelly. I mean, do I come out here and do I talk about his his overwhelming the best in the world? Which is just Cena and Rock, and Cena could have said, and Rock both would have claimed, I would have beat you except for him. Yeah. They could have actually. Ran so you're saying they could do a triple threat, and then after the losing scene, Punk, they said, look, next year, you and me, no one in our way, see because who's really I better. Be, I would beat you, no, and I would beat you. Which, it still could have played at Cena you know, losing, and then going through a crazy change toward right. obsession. Because remember how, when Shawn Michaels lost to The Undertaker, and they made it, they basically had a whole year of him obsessing and building for it, and that it worked so well for that epic retirement match? Or, but they didn't do it once a lifetime. Like you're yeah. saying, Cena and The Rock were once a lifetime. So you could have had triple threat and then the single. So yeah. you would have two matches, but it would be one in the lifetime. Yeah, yeah. Life. totally. I, I, I wish you were booking, man. I Come on. What the hell? What the hell? Come on, better, Come on Batman, Batman Beyond. Till Vince. <laughs> All right, so I want to show you guys a little bit of Lucha Underground. Now, I love Lucha Underground. D-Rock on our podcast and on our blog, blog.com. He loves Lucha Underground so much. Lucha Underground is like Pentagon Dark is such a badass. This character has grown. He used to be called Pentagon Dark Jr. And the beautiful thing about Lucha Underground is that they believe in gimmicks like so hard there's a story going on everyone calls it the temple they don't call it a ring and basically like pentagon dark has like powered up slowly like a video game character used to be pentagon dark jr and then he hooked up with vampiro in a crazy turn where vampiro showed that he still has his like dark magic connections and then like the coolest thing about lucha underground is they do like these really like highly produced little like vignettes and stuff so the one of the big like spoilers I'll give you guys for Lucha Underground is that once he becomes champion and he's like at his full power and he's accumulated all this dark like sort of magic from beating so many people, like they reveal that Vampiro is actually working for some other more mysterious person in another deeper cloak and maybe next season we'll find out. So the new season of Lucha Underground just started. Uh, I'm a big El Rey fan and we try when we can. To uh, cover and talk about the El Rey Network. Mark Burnett produces that. That's why it's so. Yeah, that's why it's so high end and so fancy free. I have a little uh, special footage. We have uh, two more uh, panels coming up. You guys might be interested. We have a few more than two panels, but two you might be interested in. We have an 80s movie panel tomorrow, the great 80s movies conversation. Think about your top 10 80s movies and let's see where your guys rank up against our top 80s movies. And uh, tonight, at the end of the night, around, I believe, 11.15 in room 305, 305, like Miami, we're going to do a, uh, a podcast called The Horror Movie Valhalla, and uh, we're going to have um, one of the directors behind uh, Ash vs. the Evil Dead, uh, Season 3, Episode 3, uh, Andres Meza, one half of the Meza brothers, is going to be there to talk about his favorite horror movies and maybe give us some... Uh, some behind-the-scenes talk about what it was like shooting Ash vs. the Evil Dead in uh, New Zealand uh, for a couple months. Um, here, um, I've we got to review a special screener of a, of a movie that was produced uh, on El Rey called Monday. It was one of our, I think our last, maybe our second-to-last podcast or third-to-last podcast. Um, it was a really great movie, and the filmmaker behind it was really nice, and he sent in... Uh, some of his top picks and wanted me to show you guys a trailer and it's a really actually fun under an hour action movie that I believe eventually is going to get hopefully played on El Rey itself um, but here you go Hey on the blog how you doing it's Alejandro Montoya Marin from Rebel Without a Crew Oh shit can and you'll need to clear out your things in the next 10 minutes. Hey, is that necessary? What are you doing? 
I'm breaking up with you. Oh my god, I want to game of thrones with Don't you worry. You're gonna find someone new. And now you can afford to take her someplace romantic. Hey, if I took your parking spot, I can win. She's not gonna get physical. We need you to kill someone. What? Mm. Fucking dance. Precisely. Mm. To the top floor, better find that fucking line and know it's not yours. What you get a piece though, watch the top doors. They take the floor by the horns like a matador. Yeah, on the train next to Tom Ford. Come on, man. Come on. You don't have stamina for shit, man. Fuck you, man. I got asthma. One, two, three, four. Oh, 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 part of a series called Rebel Without a Crew Season 1, which was based on Robert Rodriguez's book, Rebel Without a Crew. Um, and basically, he had to make that movie in two weeks for $7,000. And right now, you can watch, basically, um, they picked five filmmakers, so they made five movies simultaneously and did a reality show until July 30th. Um, it's going to be on Go90.com. You can watch all the episodes, binge watch them now. Uh, they should be on El Rey Network in the fall. Um, but for now, you can binge watch them all and see their behind-the-scenes journey of uh, making the movies and all the you know struggles and heartaches behind making a movie for only seven thousand dollars in two weeks in a foreign city. This is my top five favorite films in no particular order of the '80s: *Lethal Weapon*, *Classic*, *Die Hard*, uh, *Back to the Future*. What else? Oh. Silence of the Lambs. That was 89. 90s. 90s, damn it. All of the Indiana Jones that were in the 80s. So two and three? No, all of them, right? Okay, by the way, the guy that's talking is my friend Ian. And now, top five horror films. Do you want to find us top five horror films? You gotta to come to our panel later to find out, possibly? Or did I edit this correctly? Let's find out. Because <laughs> that was not expected. Yeehaw. Oh, yeah, no, I fixed it. There we go. I put a thing too early. Sorry. Editing is the most important thing. And that's probably why he's frazzled right now, because he's actually in his, like, editing uh, offices and is, I believe, working on some projects. Maybe. So he took some time out if to any, give maybe. us a little love. Um, but I love the El Rey Network. I love Lucha Underground. Brian Cage is going to be here. He's here today? I haven't seen him yet. I want to go see him. Go check him out. Um, and he's got like the, one of the best entrances into Lucha Underground, where like they tease him as like a cyborg, like destruction machine and stuff, and then he comes out and he like just like destroys people for like his like first like three four episodes. What's the prototype? Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's it, though. Does he have the protoplex too in his furniture? Yo, 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 everything in is... In no particular order. Everyone's got the same gimmick. Play like, with them. There's no new gimmick. There's like a million the kings. There's like, you just make them work however you do. Spanish films from 1992. If you haven't seen it, watch like, it. The, the I Sandman really like Sixth Sense. is exactly awesome. like... I really like Blue uh, Project. Awesome. It's a great the film. Um, it's another one. The Shining. Yes. Who has an angry problem? Yeah. You know what? I'm going to go with Night of the Living Dead, the original one. Well, Mr. <laughs> Mr. America is like one of the greatest wrestlers I've ever seen. One of the greatest mysteries in all of wrestling. <laughs> Who was Mr. America? Who could he have been? A nation. <laughs> he could have been anyone. A nation sat, raptured in breath, not knowing who Mr. America was. Yeah, that was the one of the ones. And only a lie detector could prove. <laughs> and he wasn't the cover. Over here. There were two different this chair. Because he, he got banned. He got oh, oh, come on. Fire, but Mr. Greg was fresh tall. It's way out of the middle of the class. Sit down in the chair. Hook him up. We're going to conduct ourselves on a lie detector test here. All the Mr. USA's in the world can't help Hogan. Because that's who you are, Mr. America. My theory is, is that Mr. America is actually Donald Trump. <laughs> and that this was like before he shaved his hair. You know, like obviously he had to cover his hair so people would know. I don't want you to think I'm singling you out because 
I make all my corporate employees take the very same lie detector test. Maybe, maybe it did. Because maybe the it, one thing maybe this I was the first time Hogan he made America great. We don't is know. A liar. How dare you call him a liar? Of all the people, Mr. this Mr. is going to be the end of your little charade, Hogan. You know who I wish to see the fight? I wish Mr. America would have fought. Let's get your reading here, audience. Let me know when you got to read it. John Cena's brother. His purple mask. Is that yeah. real? Yeah. No. Uh, for a short time, he was there for one match. Because John Cena was right, we sick. Got a reading one here. day. No. And he took his place. Yes. Don't be nervous. All I want you to do is, for the first time in your life, tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> That's savage. <laughs> we can begin the interrogation. <laughs> Officer, if you would, please. I can't I thought this was real. Hey, are you the hey, man? Hey, I'm impression, Mr. Man. America. It's so real. Yes! No, Proler. <laughs> he is Mr. Man. Yes! Whoa! Yes. It's true. The, the, she doesn't lie. Let's go on. Are you currently sitting in a wrestling ring in Pensacola, Florida? Well, what I think is most funny is that they obviously had to rig this machine. So, and then they added yes. a little sound effect in post. Like, <laughs> Look, like they um, had to make it like visually interesting. Yeah. Question. I'm tired so of the So they added a little games. ding to everything? Ask him the I'm question. pretty sure when you take a real light detector, it doesn't ding. There is a method to <laughs> When well, you tell the truth. Let's get all of it. Are you currently employed on SmackDown? Yes. Now listen. You either ask him the question I want you to ask him, or I'll find somebody else to ask it. Now, damn it, ask him the question. He's turning red. Ask him. Mr. America, are you Hulk Hogan? Can I please have something. a drink of water? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> He's pulling a Sam Jackson here. Hogan, you can drink all the water you want. So wait, what movie is that? You can drink water till you're waterlogged. Uh, I can tell you this. That's not a truth serum, okay? Uh, oh, oh. That's just simply water. But it's not gonna change them? the answer. Now damn it, yeah, yeah. I'll no, ask the question this time. Movie, oh know. that's right, you're right. It's Jackson. Mr. America, are you Hulk? Hogan. Hogan. <laughs> He's the best actor. Vince McMahon needs to win an Emmy or something. Or an Oscar. Give like, him a Tony I don't or understand. something. Give if, him a Tony. If Keenan from SNL can be nominated for an Emmy, Vince McMahon deserves one too. No. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Such epic reveal. Oh my god. <laughs> What's this mean? It means he's telling the truth, sir. What? The hell is telling the truth? In a literal sense, he is playing a yeah, character, he's so he's not the really truth. lying. He's the truth. And it's in a way. You believe it. View. Mr. America. These fans believe Are it. you Hulk Hogan? No, brother. No, brother. <laughs> That's another brother, brother. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing, but you're not asking the questions properly. Now, damn it, ask the question properly. Damn it! I know the answer. The same I know that SOB is lying to me. Now, ask him. Damn it! Don't make him tell the truth or else you're fired. The most frustrating boss thing to do. Are you Hulk Hogan? No. No, 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 no. Damn it! Ask him again! It's Hogan, 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 Hogan! No, 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 no. Ding, 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 yes. That I, I like Dude, that plays out like, so sonically that I'm a hundred percent sure Vince wrote in the dinging and the no 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 that's like Vince Carlin's. <laughs> yeah. So well, this wasn't live, so they had time to edit it. Yeah, look at that guy when he's so surprised. Unfortunately, yeah, that's why, he, yeah, that's why yeah. he became Mr. America Junior. Yeah, you know, uh, so you know, Gowan SmackDown's Gowan. moving the box, right? Yep, they Whoa. Whoa. Big, big, deal. big deal, big deal. So we have a few minutes left, and I want to give away uh, this uh, grand prize for you guys showing up, a signed Jerry Lawler 
uh, third volume of Headlocked Comic. You can get it signed by the writer, Michael Kingston, downstairs. I also have two uh, sub prizes for the next two trivia battles, and I'm going to have to leave you guys real quick because I need to transform into a character we created for the Trials of Trivia. He's part Will Ferrell as Robert Goulet, part Triple H the game. He's known as the game Goulet. <laughs> Time to play the game Goulet. <laughs> hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Game Goulet. I like wrestling, oh yeah. <laughs> That's good stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like water. I'm thirsty. So I got some wrestling uh, sure. prize things for you. Got a headlock comic, third volume, signed by some Jerry the Prince Lawler, something <laughs> like that. He's fantastic. So I'm going to do some trivia questions for you. There were times... I thought you knew where I broke off more than I could chew. I eat cookies. They were very good and delicious. This is a trivia question. One WWE Hall of Famer closed his Hall of Fame induction speech with a performance of the song My Way. If you know who this person is, please raise your hand as quickly as possible but a hall of fame entrant who ended his hall of fame entrance speech by singing the song my way that is the trivia question we have somebody right there batman beyond what's up was it rick flair and eh, wrong it was not the nature boy woo to not you <laughs> boo i see a hand wrong over there wrong Wrong. It's your time to shine. Do I need to sing the song so you guys remember what it is? It's by Frank Sinatra. It's about doing things his way. He did it his way. Anyone remember? That person right there you know? in, the, in the orange. Orange? No, he Outside? Inside? No, the one that What's up? There. What do you got? Game Goulet. Who do you think? Christian. Not Christian. No. All right, so next is... The correct answer? Anyone? One more try? No? I was saying Patterson. Pat Patterson is correct! Oh. Ding, 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 ding! That was the answer I was looking for. The great Pat Patterson. There you go, that's for you, my friend. What's your name? Jason. Jason. Can I take a picture with you and Game Goulet in that? Jeff. A selfie, a Game Goulet selfie. Awesome. Okay, now for two minor prizes. Not as exciting as a headlock volume one. I have like the little phone, cell phone clip things for you guys. I got two more for some more wrestling trivia to be answered. Uh, any requests for songs? I'll take requests right now. <laughs> any song, any show too. Something about what do you want to hear? I hear voices in my head. They say things that tell me to wrestle and come out of nowhere and jump on people and grab their neck and steal a gimmick from one great wrestler of the 1980s who had a documentary film starring about him and his, ma his amazing recovery from drug addiction. Do you know which wrestler this was? You already won. <laughs> Get your damn hands down. You're not John Cena. You can't win everything. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Guy in the back, your hand came up first. Jake the Snake Roberts. That is Jake the Snake Roberts. That is correct. Game Goulet bestows upon you one of those cell phone things. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, my God. Way to go. And one more prize for one more special person for one more trivia question. Anyone? Any song requests? Anyone? Sing any song in the world. I don't care. I know them all. <laughs> I'm a Barbie girl. I'm a Barbie girl at Barbie World! <laughs> my life is plastic. It's fantastic. You can brush my hair. You can undress me. Take Whoa. me anywhere? No, do not undress me anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Game Goulet gets paid extra for nudity. Game God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it does Let's not party. do fair wage on nudity. Which two wrestling superstars simulated a sexual act in a bed in the middle of the wrestling. God damn it, John Cena! Put your hand down. You cannot win everything. I don't care. 
Oh no, whose hand went up first? I did not see. I saw it was this guy. Which guy? Tell me. The guy right here in the front row. Okay. What is the correct answer to this? Um, Lita. Did you say Edge and Lita? Edge and Lita? They did a sex scene. I was only going to accept the answer portal. rated R superstar, Edge and Lita. Because when you're a big star like Game Goulet, you always get your billing correct. And even though you didn't get his billing correct, maybe you will next time. One fact you know, about thank that, you so much. they weren't intending to show anything, but unfortunately Lita's right nipple was exposed in that instant because they were really... Get a little frictional under there. Like, that was not part of it, but yet they were trying to fake it. Sniffing out. Yeah, they did a whole thing. Yeah. They, like, uh, they, wanted but, to, they wanted to make it look real. But here, here's the thing we would have also accepted Hulk Hogan, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> too soon, brother? No one is allowed to get frictional with Hulk Hogan. The Me Too movement is far too strong right now. All I He's got say enough heat on him. <laughs> Don't get him in any more no, trouble, no, blockbuster not, guy Frank. I'm saying it's What's debatable. What's wrong with you? It, it, was, it was debated because the okay. thing is, when you see that video, it, it doesn't look like Hulk Hogan. He doesn't get beat up. He doesn't get up and Hulk up. He doesn't body slam the girl <laughs> and then leg drop her and get the one, two, three. It was not Hulk. None of that. It was Mr. America. It could have been anyone. It could have been anyone that sex tape. Game Goulet's ready to go. He'd like to bid you adieu. I'll see you guys at WrestleMania 4012. I'll be doing the entrance song for Triple H. I'll be riding out on a moped made of foxes because his gimmick's gonna transform by 2042. It's gonna be crazy. Peace. Whoa, I'm back. Hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> so this is the Bundacast panel. We're weird. We're wacky. We're strange. Uh, we have some more uh, panels coming up. We have great 80s movie conversation tomorrow. We also have the DCFU, the Good, the Bad, and the Bizarro Awards Show. We're going to talk about some fun moments in uh, DC Comics media history. Um, and maybe we can vote on them and rate them. We can decide which one was the best Joel Schumacher Batman movie. Batman Forever or Batman and Robin? And then, if your minds don't melt, we'll have a podcast. <laughs> yeah. uh, so this will all be an episode of the podcast that will probably come out uh, within the next month or so. Um, you've all been uh, recorded here, and uh, Florida's a one-party consent state, and it was written into things, so <laughs> no residuals, guys. Sorry. Whoa, Game Goulet's still inside me. What's wrong? <laughs> fight your demons. Um, any last uh, thoughts for the kids, Mr. J, Frank? Mm. We think. He's thinking? Okay, I'll have last thoughts for you. Um, tweet us at, but this is my favorite thing. This is the thing. This is Stone Cold Steve Austin and Booker T in a grocery store. I love it. Having a brawl. It's I amazing because Booker T, like, literally is hunting down Stone Cold like he is Elmer Fudd and Stone Cold is like Bugs Bunny. Like, he's looking, he's looking through, like, it starts off that Booker T's in the grocery store and he sees a bald guy and he gets scared. And then he has to check if it's Hogan. And he has to check if it's Stone Cold and it's not. And then all of a sudden, Stone Cold comes up behind him and just starts attacking him. Opening a beer. And then they went and they just like tore through and did like, like, so like, awesome. like ten to like thirty thousand dollars of, of damage in this grocery store, and it's amazing. Yeah, it's it amazing. Is. It seeing is. seeing people like just like smash milk against each other's heads and Crap. all that fun stuff. Look, oh yeah, cover him in sugar, because he's so sweet. He's the five-time wow. sugar champion now. Whoa, <laughs> Mr. J, last thoughts. Mr. J Just, is our DCFU uh, host. That's his, uh, his specialty, his brand on our podcast. He loves talking about comics, CW, all that good stuff. Well, this was one of my favorite clips from back in the day. And no, I stole it from you. No, it's my favorite. I osmosed it from you. It's my favorite, too. And uh, Stone Cold and Booker T. And Booker T was one so of the few favorite. wrestlers that was able to come from WCW and actually like make it in WWE. Because well... I don't think he ever made it because, as you know, Triple H never laid down for him in WrestleMania. But he still won. That's sad. Uh, King of the Ring. Champion. And the King no, of the he Ring. won Heavyweight Champion too. And the King of the Ring. And the King yeah, of the Ring. Twice. He got the King Jack. Yeah. He won. Yeah, he ranked twice. He won it once when they transferred over. Right. He was the champion, and then he won it one more time. Two times. He was four times in WWE, and then he became five times. In WWE. Yeah. WCW. Yeah. 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 And then he won one actual that they actually gave him. Championship, like when he was already established, which I was actually counting. 
Alrighty. Any last things you guys want to say with the last uh, four yeah, minutes why, of the why, podcast? Why, why no love back? I mean, you're gonna do wrestling. Huh? Why no what? Yeah. Kurt Angle love back. Oh, we, Kurt well, Angle milk bath. Actually, this we we had that that clip for for a while, but I actually am responsible for the Kurt Angle milk mac not being here. I I forgot the USB it was on, and I was like, had to like patch this uh this footage together and stuff like that. But so. We still have a montage. Unfortunately, I could not fit the milk bath in due to circumstances, <laughs> and also too because I couldn't bring I couldn't bring enough milk or beer in here. You saw how little water I had left. Do you could be hard because you put this match, which was a small lesser known but great one, but you did not have clips of the many times that this man was supposed to die. Oh God! All clips needs to be shown. He, like eight that's, times he supposedly died. That's you know, that's right? a separate panel in and of itself. Is yeah. the the life and times of Vincent Kennedy the McMahon? Lives and deaths All right, McMahon. his tag team partner God. Okay, <laughs> his many deaths, his many affairs. The fight with the president his, too. His, his fight yeah. with the president of the United, his, the future president of the United States. The his his the time that he sedated his wife and made out with Trish with, with, with Trish Stratus in front of her downstairs. face. I know. Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine if your boss said, "I need to make out with you in front of my wife on TV"? She'll love it. <laughs> and my, my wife wants this to happen. She's the president of this company. He disbanded his daughter for a period of time. Yeah, that's crazy. There's oh, also especially that great... no DQ match in 03 yeah. with him and and Steph. Well, one of the great things I, I found, and I recommend you guys watch, uh, preparing for this podcast, <laughs> was I found an episode of The Weakest Link. Where uh, Triple H and uh, Trish Stratus and Stephanie McMahon and Booker T and William Regal are on Big Show are all on an episode of The Weakest Link. And you see that basically halfway through the show, they all stop answering questions because all the questions have gone way too hard for them. Right? (laughs) And then it's amazing because it's almost like they did the whole show in a work because it ends with, with Stephanie and Triple H. And William Regal, who was the smartest one throughout the whole weakest link. And then, of course, he gets eliminated by Stephanie and Triple H. And Triple H gets to win. <laughs> you see? And not you be the weakest link. He's got to go over, game, man. He's got to go over. That's what he does best. That's what he does best. The WCW Family Feud. Oh, yeah. That's good, too. With uh, They have the good guys versus the bad guys. Yeah, that's a great, a great visual. And that's actually, like, one of the first times they kind of, like... You know, in the 80s, we're breaking that sort of fourth wall, you know, and literally said, these are the bad guys. These are the good guys. <laughs> and they did another one for Glow. Oh, yeah. Glow, Glow, Glow. And I think that is all the time we have for today. Thank you guys so, so much for being here. Thank you for being part of us. Please get a card. Please check us out. Whoa, that was for Game Glee. I know, that wasn't for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. I got one. Thank you. 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 Like, like explicit, we're about to see blood, we're about to see gore. Make sure that your nose is in there. He's dying. Terry Funk, save us. Terry Funk's amazing. That is I love Terry Funk. He's the best dad. I don't know if he finally stopped wrestling. No, he'll never stop. He's going to wrestle inside his casket with the worms. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. That that's what May Young wanted. That's what you know. Fabulous Mula wanted. Like they would have liked that. That's why she took it. Today was bumps it. But they would have liked. Like I really think those women were so tough. He would have wanted that on their like history books. Like they died in the ring. And that's how hardcore they were. But without a doubt, the most violent. So it looks like we just ran that podcast. Through a hell in a cell. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Say that match was the single most pain in a ring until Jenna versus Charmel. Teddy Boo. This is our other podcast member, Danielle.
She's going to be doing a panel called The Hottest Sex That Isn't Sex. Tomorrow night, it's Saturday about shipping, night. Don't get excited. It's about shipping. No, no, uh, no sexy things are actually going to happen. Well, but yeah. we're going to talk about all the well, foreplay. I thought you, well. you bring a girl to this panel, you might get laid with them. Whoa. Yeah. Lady Anchor, right? Wundercast? Give yeah. it up for Wundercast, man. What an adorable name. You're listening to the Wundercast. That's right. So along with all the other announcements and fun things, I have been in several uh, podcast groups on Facebook, and I have gotten some podcast commercials and one of the greatest things that happened on the nerdist now id10t and that was now tainted because of chris hardwick and all that stuff was he used to start every podcast with what he called the nerdist community cork board and he would take people's things that they wanted to promote Mm -hmm. and he would give them a free you know plug on his show that's nice So, I've decided to appropriate that idea. Bam! Boom. Homage to it. This is the podcast communal cork station. The Vunda Cork? The Vunda Cork? That sounds... I don't know. The Vunda Born? I don't know. Don't pick a name. No, no. Generic podcast communal... Generic podcast communal... Cork station. (laughs) All right. The court cast. GP, C, the GPCS. Yeah, there you go. The GPC- GPCS. Uh-huh. So basically the way this works is I've gotten some 30-second ads made by people of their podcast. Mm-hmm. And I've given... I'm going to send out some 30-second ads or minute-less ads of our podcast. And uh, you, I'm going to put it in a chunk with maybe this intro, this outro and stuff. And uh, people can play it on their show, and then uh, every like month or two months, we'll you know clean slate and give a brand new set of uh, podcasts, a bunch of plugs, and maybe if someone else wants to be the voice introing and outroing the list of podcast commercials and stuff, that'll be tacked on to people's shows, Mm -hmm. and that you know that will hopefully spread the reach and the influence of of many ships because uh, high tide. Raises all ships, which is a good thing. You want to raise all the boats up so that when Godzilla comes, he can eat them before he eats people. Danny, you're not paying attention to me. I am super paying attention. The whole point of the cork station is to pay attention. I am paying attention! You've been talking about this cork station. Okay, so do you like this idea? Are you excited about it? I am excited about it. It's always nice to learn about other podcasts and support the podcast community. We are a nation of weirdos, I guess, that like to... Mostly talk to ourselves in rooms <laughs> yeah. and hope others listen. And so maybe this will get, help us spread the word for each other. Woo woo. So enjoy the ads to follow. And also check us out at OutCon August 4th. We're going to have a table. Woo We're going to have prizes. We're going to have a raffle to benefit Pride Lines. Yes, we are. And Xena is a tugging. Move over, Jimmy Kimmel. Step aside, Conan O'Brien. Back off, Stephen Colbert. It's my turn. I'm Mike Shea, and every Tuesday on my show, Mike Talks Funny, I sit down and talk with comedians, actors, film fans, podcasters, anybody willing to get down, get deep, and get dirty. I don't remember the first time I had sex. That was horrible. (laughs) I didn't even finish the first time I had sex. I've tasted what most comics want, and now I have to go back and eat the leftovers. You're so brave. For wearing that shade of lipstick on stage. Oh my god! <laughs> Think of Last Comic Standing and Mystery Science Theater 3000 had a baby, and that's the show. My online doppelganger is also a, a larger black man. He is uh, Adrian Miller. All the top results are he's a professor. Interviews with great people, not to mention all kinds of awesome new music every show. Hey, this is Don Smith. This is Scotty Mage. Hey, this is Kevin Goatee with Comics Watching Comics. Brought to you by Eventide Entertainment.
Greetings, wrestling fans. This is Dave Dynasty, host of the Dave Dynasty Show, the podcast that every week brings you nearly two hours of pro wrestling goodness from the Midwest. We feature interviews with the legends of the past, stars of today, and the prospects of tomorrow. We have segments that feature classic wrestling audio, whole episodes devoted to the history of Midwest pro wrestling, and much, much more. Do not miss an episode of the Dave Dynasty Show. We are available on all podcast platforms, or you can access past episodes and all of our social media links by visiting DaveDynasty.com. Be good, be safe, and keep on growing. Hey, Radiate.fm listeners. It's the smooth sounds of me, Steven, of the Vundacast, which is on Mondays at Radiate.fm. And also with me is the lovely cohortress, Danielle. Formerly known as the Quiet Storm. Oh, that was you all those years? Mm -hmm. That's how quiet that storm was. It was silence. Mm -hmm. We talk about lots of stuff on our podcast on Mondays. Here is talk all things nerdy on the Vundacast. Sometimes we talk wrestling. We talk it all. You should subscribe to the Vundacast on iTunes or Stitcher or Google Play or uh, what's the last one? Ah, tune in. That's what it's called. <laughs> so many things, but I only use iTunes, so I don't even understand. Wow. Great advertisement for all your other affiliates. Yo, Stitcher, Google Play. Get an iPhone, bro. Tune in Monday, radiate.fm. This is Danielle. This is Steven. And we're here to tell you about the Vundacast, official podcast of Vundablog.com, the home of whatever. We talk comics, movies, pop culture, dogs, Miami drivers, spies, everything and anything awesome that we love we talk about on this podcast every monday at four eastern time only here on the radioactive underground radiate To the Wundercast. Wundercast? Give yeah. it up for Wundercast, man. What an adorable name. You're listening to the Wundercast. We're on Express Elevator to Hell. Going down. Two. One. Mark. So what topics do we talk about on the Vundercast? We talk about whatever we like, but mostly we talk about pop culture. We talk about Star Wars. Mira, who's Snow White? She's supposed to be some kind of consultant. Apparently, she saw an alien once. <laughs> Whoopie fucking do. Movies we've seen. Don't lie. All we talk about is aliens. All we talk about is aliens. All we talk about is bringing things back to Star Wars. All we ever do is bring things back to 1997. Don't fuck around. Yeah, I guess he's right. He's sawing his phone out. Your face. Stop sawing us out, Steven. Stop telling the truth. Danielle, you are not alone. Neither are you listeners. Mondays at radiate.fm with the Vundercast. Chewing. We're home. The Vundercast, which is on Mondays at Radiate. Hey, Danielle. Yes. Co host of the Vundercast, co workers. Mm-hmm. How many nipples does Kylo Ren have? Well, only two, but they are glorious. To find out how glorious they are, tune in Mondays, radiate.fm. 
Rayla all year long till episode 9 comes out and beyond. Check it out. I am the ultimate badass. Yes, State of the badass art. You do not want to fuck with me. Hey, radio listeners. So tune in to us on TuneIn because the podcast is also there. You should stitch yourself to us on Stitcher because we're down. And if you want to Google Play with us, our podcast is also on Google Play. But me, I... I just use iTunes to subscribe to my own podcast. Great! That's just fucking great, man! Now what the fuck are we supposed to do? This is some real pretty shit now, man! You finished? That's it, man. Game over, man! It's game over! What the fuck are we gonna do now? What are we gonna do? Subscribe to the Vondacast. The Vondacast, man. What an adorable name.